Hello, 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 it's Curbnot here. Now, the other day I watched a video by Scott Manley in which he uncovered a bug with the Quantum Struts mod. The bug works in such a way that if the struts are attached to wheels, the whole ship becomes fixed relative to the planets. Now, the bug even works at high speeds, although the side effects, you know, includes nausea, headaches, and, you know, instantaneous death which, contrary to popular belief, can be fatal. Anyway, uh, this interesting glitch had me intrigued, and I began to think about how I'd be able to use it to my advantage. Obviously, floating platforms was my th first thought, but I didn't feel that exploiting a bug to make a platform was very classy, and so I did some research, and I came up with the mod which I am using now. The mod's name is Airships to Other Planets, and as its name suggests, um, it adds airships and buoyant parts to the game. Um, after messing around with the mod and finding its limits, I continued to think about where a floating platform would be most useful. You know, if it needed to be convenient, then I'd stay on Kerbin and uh, have a floating village in the sky, but uh, convenience and practicality have never been what Kerbal Space Program has been about. So I figured, what the heck? Let's go for Jewel! There's no surface to land on, it's hard to colonize, it's green. Why not? Anyway, after deciding my destination, I proceeded to plan my transfer to Jewel. I could just send up the one rocket, but you know, I wanted to have a fancy platform and that meant extra weight. So I sent up the ship in three parts, um, the main platform, the balloon or buoyancy module as I called it, and the tug. The platform went up first, as it would act as the core of the ship. I followed that with the buoyancy module, which proved to be a good idea, as I almost rage quit when it came to dock the tug. Uh, I, d I designed the tug with a bicoupler and two nuclear engines. Whether it was a bug in the physics engine or my poor design skills or my lack of piloting expertise, the, the ship was a nightmare to control. The RCS systems would fire randomly, the ship would swerve off to the side and go into a weird roll for no apparent reason. Long story short, it was really crap, and I took great pleasure in dropping it into the sea and building a half-decent tug which I proceeded to dock to the platform. After that, it was a very short 15-minute burn to Jewel, followed by some course corrections and a final descent. Um, the long entry effect actually had me worried that I wouldn't slow down enough to deploy the balloon, but thankfully I deployed it and all was well. Unfortunately, my Kerbals were unable to traverse the platform, as technically it was moving laterally, and so they would simply fall over upon contact with the floor. Anyway, while you're watching all of these things happen, I'd like to talk about the real life and practicalities of sending an airship to a gas giant, such as Jules' real life equivalent, Jupiter. Right, so Jupiter, as you may already know, is the fifth planet from the Sun, and is the largest in the solar system. Now, the first problem one would encounter, as long as you manage to get your airship there in the first place, would be Jupiter's rather big and annoying magnetosphere. And when I say big, I, I really I really mean it. It's, it's so big, in fact, that the tail end of it reaches almost up, as far out as Saturn's orbit. Wikipedia, the most reliable source of information known to man, says that the magnetosphere of Jupiter is the cavity created in the solar wind by the planet's magnetic field, which, from what I can gather, just means it's a gap, where it's not as breezy because Jupiter has a magnetic field. Um, Jupiter's magnetic field, by the way, is generated by electrical currents in the planet's outer core, which is just happens to be composed of liquid metallic hydrogen. Um, as a side note, Io, one of Jupiter's moons, actually helps um, out his bud, Jupe, as it spews out sulfur dioxide, helping to shape Jupiter's magnetosphere. Of course, none of this takes place in KSP, to the great joy of the physics engine. Um, now that you know what that magnetosphere thing is, I can start to explain why it's a problem. So, in 1973, Pioneer 10 uh, said hi to Jupiter, and then, a year later, in 1974, Pioneer 11 dropped in to say hi. Now, a Pioneer 11 had a pretty hard time. Radiation was 10 times as intense as it was expected, and the whole mission was on the brink of cat catastrophic failure. 
Fortunately, Jupiter thought he would be nice, and so its magnetosphere ended up wobbling a little, uh, letting good old Pioneer Eleven survive to die another day. Although Pioneer Eleven didn't get away unscathed, uh, a whole bunch of pictures of Jupiter's moon Io were wiped from its memory. Uh, this problem, though, can be overcome, and uh, all of the following flybys of Jupiter were equipped with countermeasures. So, our airship would have to have said countermeasures. This, in turn, would weigh it down both in the initial ship, which would up the cost and the fuel consumption and all that jazz, and it would um, weigh down our final platform, meaning that it would sit lower in the Jovian atmosphere. Which brings me to the next problem. So, Jupiter seems to be a nice place from where we are, but when you actually get there, not so much. Uh, the fact of the matter is that Jupiter is a really, really windy place. Um, the big red spot is a prime example of the turbulent weather within the gas within gas giants. Um, as on Earth, too much wind means the flight of an airship will be dangerous and impractical, even catastrophic. With winds on Jupiter being much higher than those on Earth, we would need to find a way to cope with the environment there, or, or try to avoid it altogether. Generally, it would be more practical to float high in the Jovian atmosphere, where the wind speeds are much lower, though this would come at a cost of less weight and uh, more buoyancy. The main problem, though, would be finding the buoyancy to keep you high enough. On Earth, this is possible by using helium-filled envelopes, as the air around is much heavier. The airship is pushed upwards with a stu substantial force. On a gas giant such as Jupiter, however, the atmosphere actually consists predomin predominantly of hydrogen, an element lighter than helium. The difference in mass consequently means that the balloon will have a negative lift, i.e. be falling to, into the planet, which is never really that good. Um, to find the buoyancy to float on Jupiter, we'd need to find an element significantly lighter than hydrogen, or find another me method of floating. As for finding more suitable elements, it's basically impossible. I mean, hydrogen is the lightest element we know of. Proteum, the most common isotope of hydrogen, has one prote proton and one electron. No neutrons, that's just it. Which means that if we were to take anything else away from it, it would cease to be an atom. It would it could turn into radiation. That's how light it is. So, I mean, what now? If we can't find an element to replace helium, then we're screwed, right? Not necessarily. We now have two options. One is practically improbable, while the other simp simply puts us back to dealing with the winds. Option one would be to simply have a vacuum balloon. Although this may work on paper, it's almost impossible to construct, as the structure would have to be very light, and therefore it would sacrifice structural integrity. There have been designs which work on paper, but maintaining a constant vacuum and simply building the structure would be a feat of engineering. Practically, this option is almost impossible. Our second option would be to simply have a hot air balloon style craft, which would work much the same way as they do here on Earth. Unfortunately, this option would entail having a very large and cumbersome balloon, which would give nowhere near as much lift as it would here on Earth. The result being that the balloon would float lower in the Jovian atmosphere, leaving it open to the turbulent winds of Jupiter. In the end, the technical difficulties of sending any form of airship to Jupiter and making it work are too great at this point in time. Although, perhaps in years to come, smarter people than myself will come up with ingenious ideas and we can all live out our retirements on an airship in Jupiter. Until then, though, we should be content with the simplistic, easy-to-use and imaginative, imaginative approach that Kerbal Space Program and the Airships to Other Planets mod takes. I hope you give this mod a try, and I would love to see any missions that you take to Geo with this mod. Until next time, have an awesome day. That's me signing out now. See you later.